by a bus. The fear takes over of do not die and the body moves. Yes. I mean, I know there's a mental layer to that, but it almost seems... Yes, I, I, I agree, and I would say biological. that... Biological. So that, let's look that at... That one part of fear. Yeah, you, yes. you're, you're just bringing up exactly what the next point I was going to make, is let's oh. look at the function of fear. Okay. So, you know, for, you know fear has a function. Um, and I can come up with two, you know, if you can come up with more. The first one is to protect, to be cautious. There is something, I wouldn't call, ultimately call it fear, but, you know, unfortunately a lot of us learned it through fear. Like, you know, if you have fire and you put your hand in it, you're going to burn yourself, right? So, after you, if you've done that, you're not going to do it again. That's wisdom. That's really the basis of wisdom. It's through experience. But if you haven't put your hand in the fire, usually you're going to get, DON'T PUT YOUR HAND IN THAT FIRE! And that, that person who's done that has embedded that with an enormous amount of fear. And they're giving you cautious advice, and you won't do it. So it's, it's, there's, there is instinctual caution, yes. Um, there is protectiveness. So function has, has a positive, plays a positive role in your life, to an extent. It's when fear is used to limit you, or suppress you, or keep you from joy, or keep you from happiness, or keep you from liking yourself, or any of those things. That's what I'm addressing more now. It's when, and it oftentimes the reason why we have those fears is because we haven't taken the time to examine its true nature. And we just accept it as reality. Does that make sense? And <clears throat> from a Buddhist point of view, I could say even further that even that instinctual fear, I'll share that, I'll give that for you to, to, to contemplate, a Buddha doesn't have those fears. <clears throat> so that even those fears, that a, a Buddha has no fear. If he did, he wouldn't be a Buddha. He or she wouldn't be a Buddha. Um, so the, the, you, you reach, you go into the realm of Buddhahood when you've overcome all fear. So it's a very real part of the Buddhist practice, is understanding what that is. And it's the, uh, so in a sense, there's no fear of death. There's a transcendence of death. There's no fear of illness. There's a transcendence of illness. There's no fear of getting old. Because there's a transcendence of that. And uh, Joseph Chilton Pierce, does anybody know Joseph Chilton Pierce? Brilliant, brilliant uh, scientist and... Uh, spiritualist. He wrote a book called well, the, Breaking the Cosmic Egg. That was his big book. And he wrote a book uh, called um, the, the, the Transcendence of the Brain, something like that. It's an amazing book about how he, he basically, his theory is, is that the human beings are evolving. And we've been since evolving since the reptilian brain, the limbic brain, this big thing here. And that he believes that we're we as human beings are trying to evolve, we're ready to evolve to our next level of our brain, which is the heart. And that certain beings on our planet, like Jesus and Buddha and various others, have managed to do that. But he talks about one episode that he had where he just realized that he, for some reason, was able to overcome fear and just noticed that all of the limitations just stopped. He was able to climb up a cliff um, that no person feasibly could climb up. This is a scientist saying that, that he was able to defy gravity. That's how powerful overcoming fear, can, uh, the fear of death can be. But I don't have a lot of time, so I want to get over, <laughs> get back, five minutes, okay. How are we doing? Good. How are we doing? <laughs> so, here we have the function of fear. And the question is, in what areas of your life do you have Fear, you know, where, you know, what's the mental process, what's the mental story that, that, that you have towards certain things? And when you can identify that, it would be an exciting thing to sit down and meditate on it. So, does anybody dare to name one of their fears? Something you're afraid of? Oh, I'm dying. Dying. Okay, that's it. Fear of rejection. Rejection. Okay, thank you. Um, loss of income or quality of life. Okay, good. 
So they're good ones. Those are good ones, and they're, they're good to. So I would suggest, in terms of bringing this into your daily life, is to is to do some meditating on them, and to try to sift out, because some of that is just healthy fear, healthy concern. You know, how am I going to earn my money? I'm going to die. What am I going to do about it? And um, I do. Uh, you know, I, I you know. I'd like to present myself in the best way I can without being rejected. So there's a certain level of common sense in that. The idea is, well, what's, what's left over that's triggering a lot more emotional reaction, which is keeping you from taking that full breath, let's say. And to examine that. And, you know, one way you can examine that is that in this idea of, for instance, rejection is to do a meditation on what is it, what part of me is fearful of being rejected. And then when you try to look for it, you realize you can't find it. It doesn't exist as you think it exists. And so the idea, I guess what I'm saying here is that's to explore this idea of looking at all aspects of your life and seeing, you know, how concrete are they? What is the true nature of them? And, to exa and, and the more that you can take time to examine them, it might take some of the charge away from them. Anyone have any questions on mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We can have, um, if you're going to be around, questions upstairs over tea. Okay. okay. I, just, I just want to, can I just do a sure, more minutes? Um, I just want to offer that, I mean, this uh, um, something to think of um, for you, uh, and to just uh, offer this idea that um, maybe to think about one day, sit for a while, and just consider the fact that maybe you um, are not as limited as you think you are, you're a lot, or you're, you're much more, just areas of yourself where you think, hmm, maybe I am a lot stronger. I am a lot funnier. I am a lot more attractive. I am uh, more talented. And I think that this is the time, this is our time. You know, I, I work a lot with gay men, and I work a lot, a lot of people with a lot of gay men. And a lot of our conditioning is around uh, of being secretive and, and being fearful, fear of, uh, f of people knowing about ourselves throughout our childhood and things like that. A lot of our lives has been about that, about living our lives in a very limited way, or a secret way, or a confined way. And I just want to invite you to consider that this is your time, that a lot of the things that we learned as children, as boys, um, those are the, a lot of those fears and those conditionings and those ideas and those perceptions, they don't pertain to us anymore. They're outdated. And, that, and that what I'd like to offer you is to use these concepts to redefine yourself in a way that's more expansive, that's freer. So um, I just want to read that quote again. With the realization of one's potential and self-confidence in one's ability, one can build a better world. And I would like to dedicate the end of my practice every time we come together and we, you know, we've just generated an enormous amount of energy, positive energy, just being here and connecting with each other from our hearts and engaging in who we are, that um, we can dedicate that energy. And then um, we can dedicate it for the benefit of all beings and to your idea, entertaining the idea, that you, the potential that you have, even to become a Buddha, an enlightened being, is there. And that may this experience plant the seeds and be the cause of that to be realized. I wish that for all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. <clears throat>